meeting. Now it was really tough session. After post lunch session, very tough session. Now we'll break for tea. The class has broken before time, so we should go to tea. Thereafter we'll come back. After 15 minutes, then next session. Additional Director General, Dr. R.K. Bans will deliver lecture on two tales of two cities, Kolkata and Jodhpur, and Thane and Nagpur. Sir was the ex-Joint Secretary, Ministry of Urban Development and Ministry of Housing, and now presently uh, presently he is at ATI as Additional Director General. I am requesting him to kindly help us. Good afternoon. I hope you had a good lunch and after a coffee at least uh, you are feeling comfortable. I wanted to speak on municipal solid waste management and compare solid waste management in two cities, Kolkata and Jodhpur. Why? Why we chose this topic, solid waste management? One is the legal reason that there were municipal solid waste management rules notified in 2000 by Ministry of Environment and Forest under EP Act 1986. So compliance of rules is necessary. If you don't comply with the rules, what will happen? Some authority, pollution control board, some other authority will catch us besides our own pressures of working in a municipal corporation. And why these two cities? Why Kolkata and why Yudhpur? Kolkata is where we right now are sitting. One of the biggest cities, not only in India, but also in world one of the biggest cities. It is happening, why it is happening, we will see after some time. Why Calcutta is happening as far as municipal solid waste management is concerned, even among other metro cities of India. And Jodhpur is important because it is here for town. You must have heard about uh, mid-29 crashes. What happened that once a aircraft takes off, if it catches a bird or it meets an accident with any bird, Indian fails and then the consequences happen. So government of India was very much keen when I was there to start at least some some kind of solid waste management for Jaipur especially as early as possible. So that project was uh, conceived in 2002 or 3. It, uh, as it happens in government, it was under consideration but comes quite for some time. Then it was uh, vetted and approved by CPHEO. You know what is CPHEO? CPHEO is Central Public Health Engineering and Environment Organization. This is APEX organization for approval of all public health engineering projects. Right. All uh, water supply projects also. Those of you who have visited the uh, Ministry of Rural Development know that all water supply projects and sanitation projects require their approval. At least their technical approval. So this was vetted, money was placed, and this project was completed. Now we will be comparing these two projects. They are widely different in terms of quality and quantity. How? Those who do not belong to Calcutta and are not working in Calcutta, especially the participants from Bharatpur, Jaipur, uh, Amritsar, if I remember correctly, and other places, might not be knowing that Calcutta Municipal Corporation itself is a big body. It covers 141 wards, distributed over 15 boroughs. The borough concept is here in Calcutta. I don't think it is anywhere else in any municipal corporation. It is spread over an area of 187 square kilometer. River Hugli is principal waterway and divides this city into two parts. Part eastern to the river is Calcutta, and part western is Howrah. Howrah is not part of Calcutta, Howrah is separate municipal corporation. Nature of 
actually river has its advantages and disadvantages. What are the advantages? Advantages that you get a natural water body from which you can draw limitless quantity of water. So Calcutta does not have any water supply problems. As is in case with most metros, in Chennai it is very difficult to imagine proper water supply for to say 24 into 7. It is very, very difficult. In fact, one of the problems with other corporations is water supply more than sewage disposal or no water supply, no sewage. This is, is a very, very simple thing. And municipal solid waste management, they can very well handle, but they can't create water. Nobody creates water. In fact, there are cases going on between states, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, for distribution of water. Luckily, in Calcutta, we don't have any such problem. We have plenty of plenty of water to supply all the time. That sort of quantity and availability of water is not a problem. So that is advantage of having a river. What is disadvantage? Disadvantage is during these times, times of monsoon, when there is water logging, river also rises. So it is difficult to drain out the water. But still, I have worked in New Delhi also, I have worked in Calcutta also, I have seen other metropolises also, and heard about Bombay. I can safely say, and anybody can con contact me also if he wants, that Calcutta water logging is best managed. I can't say it is fully preventive, it is best managed. Yesterday, day before yesterday, last week, there were episodes of water logging because of cyclonic weather and uh, low pressure areas over Calcutta. But within few hours, water disappears. The long story of how water disappears. There, there is a pumping system in operation. As soon as water collects, the pumps are put into operation. And the gradient helps in taking away the water. Those are besides the point. But what I wanted to say that having a river is a asset. But at times, during especially times of tide, high tide, it's also a problem which happens during late monsoon. Late monsoon around this part time, uh, last week of August, September and early part of October. Calcutta is having huge population, 45 lakh plus, and its density is 25,000 persons per square kilometer. When we will see Jodhpur, Jodhpur is having density of about 11,000 persons per square kilometer. It's sparsely populated area as compared to Calcutta, which is densely populated, one of the most densely populated areas. Earlier it was number one in India, but now I think Chandni Chowk area of Delhi has gone up to 30,000 person per square kilometer. But this is average of Calcutta. Having uniform spread over 187 kilometers. Calcutta, like other metropolises, all having problem of floating population. Daily population comes close to 8 million, about 80 lakh persons who are coming from nearby areas to Delhi. They add to our municipal solid waste also. This high relative humidity, especially in monsoon months, and this high rainfall, which you will find in, in extremely opposite in case of Jodhpur, which is in the western part of the country, is sparsely rainfall, rather dry area, and humidity is very very low. Waste generated in a city like Calcutta is 3,500 empty per day, out of which we analyze the waste. Household generated is 25%, commercial waste generated generate about 51%, and the major components are paper, plastic, polythene, etc. Et this is common to most of the things. Here is the pictures which people not coming from Calcutta would not have seen. This is an automatic mechanical sweeper and the steel version vehicle which are being used in Calcutta. This is how the collection takes place. Collection efficiency is around 85 to 90 percent. It's not so in most of the towns. When we hear about the other towns, then we find Calcutta is much better placed. Vadrus are employed to see major roads which add up to 1850 kilometers for soil gas management service is providing two blocks and each block is providing with a fixed number of sweepers and 
Each people is provided with the hand carved of tricycle, two men side apart and tricycle to seek the roads, against violence, open drain, collection of weight, loading into hand cart, transfer it to secondary collection point in form of open weight or number of place container. These containerized hand cart pictures can be seen having four buckets of 40 to 50 liters have been introduced in some of the wards to transfer the waste collector into containers. Now, sometimes this waste is directly loading into vehicles and so this was an important call. So sometimes waste is directly loading into vehicles and this avoids double handling of the waste. In commercial areas, there is scope of improvement. Now in Kelta, there is this peculiar issue. The issue is added words. What is added words? There was an original Kelta area. Afterwards, some area which belonged to South 24 Pardana district, nearby district, was added to Kelta Corporation. These are still known as added area, although they are part and parcel of Kelta Municipal Corporation. So these are five boroughs. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And generally, in common partners, known as Jadavpur, Vihala, Garden Beach, Joka, 1, 2, and 3. KMC covers this area also. And there is NC which provides labor. And below, you can see a poster which highlights the achievements of the Ekta Municipal Corporation over solid waste management. How this is done? The bins are provided in some of the wards, and awareness has been done. The single bin has been provided non-recyclable waste and the bins are also provided for recyclable waste. Sweeping and collection are done in coarse city area regularly, very well. But in added areas, it is not on daily basis or regular basis. That is our observation. Sweeping and collection is done in core area regularly. But in householder areas, like in slum, low income group, middle income group areas, also, also shop products. They throw waste on the streets, open spaces also, and open drains also after the collection hours. What does it mean? It means that once the collection has taken place, afterwards, once the collection has taken place, if people don't keep the place clean, place again gets littered with solid waste. And 60% of primary collection and storage is in form of open wets, which ultimately develops into an unhygienic condition, poor smell, odor, proliferation of lice, and proliferation of disease. This is this time, August, September, is generally regarded as the best time for the practicing doctors. They have all kinds of diseases, all kinds of uh, patients, and especially all the communicable diseases like uh, dengue. Dengue is a disease which is very, very common in uh, Calcutta as well as in other areas. So we have to take all the precautions to keep our mosquito breeding sites dry so that mosquitoes don't breed. And the entire set of programs are taken by the Municipal Corporation for prevention of those diseases. But the cause is here. And what happens is sometimes the fixed beds are constructed, but because of correction, it so happens that payload strikes to correct and some part of brick wall is broken down. That brick wall is broken down, that uh, garbage overflows, which gives rise to all kinds of infection, and water pollution, etc., etc., etc. The quality of waste, domestic waste contains about 45% food and vegetable waste parts, followed by 8.8% paper. This has been very properly analyzed. Why it was analyzed? I will tell you later. Density of solid waste is around 400 kg per meter cube. The waste from the market contains 32% leaves, haze and straw followed by 25% foods and vegetables. Waste from commercial area contains about 15% of recyclable waste. That is the livelihood of rag pickers. Recyclable waste in uh, domestic waste comes out of uh, comes out to around 25%. And chemical properties of waste indicate that CM ratio is maximum 22% in the market and minimum in hotel waste. The moisture level in city is around 60%, Kelta is a high humidity area, and cal calorific value from all sorts of waste is 1832 kcal per kg. That is important.
possible for birds to assess that garbage. And we can transport more garbage due to compact system. Transportation is odorless. Rag pickers cannot pick any further rags. And there is no spilling of garbage because it has been compacted. There are also movable compactors. The idea is that compactors, these movable, this was fixed con uh, compactor, mobile com compactors will be able to carry about five times more waste than the existing compactors. And then vehicles required will also be less. The idea was they will be commissioned very, very soon. I think uh, maybe in the near future we will be able to see this kind of compactors. Now, once the thing has been compacted and carried to dump it place, now here is the real beauty of the system. More than 80% of total waste generated in KMC area is disposed at Dhapa land site. Dhapa is in Mumbai. People who go from Calcutta to Vidyan district pass through a state called EM bypass. The left of EM bypass, uh, besides Science City, all the left area is called Dhapa. Dhapa is our Land fix site. Now there are two pictures of Dhapa I will show you. One is the picture above and below the things are under operation. The present method of waste disposal cannot be called as sanitary or controlled land duty because neither it is placed systemically nor it is covered with earth or compacted in the thin layers. But what is being done is this. They have got a very elaborate CCTV network to know which vehicles have come, which vehicles will be coming, and there are computerized webages know the quantity of garbage. Now, out of the Dhapa area, 11.6 hectare is a PCB remediation project with bird wing resistance. The purpose is to make this landfill site environment friendly and hand it back to Kalta Municipal Corporation after 5 years. 23.5 hectare area This area is reserved for 500 ton per day compost plant set up by a private company with a technical backup. This plant was commissioned in year 2000. At that point of time, I was working in Delta Metropolitan Development Authority. So I have very clear memory about this project. We had thought that this project will be one of the best projects in Eastern India because we, at that point of time, we were thinking of converting garbage into useful product. These are pictures of uh, that plant. How it is being done? It is composting is done through windrows method. Yeah, three methods. All engineers must be known this. Nothing for me to tell. It is done by windrows method. And the party it does it provides 1.25 percent royalty to Kalta Nuclear Corporation on the sale of organic fertilizer. The company claims that it has achieved break even. So when company itself says we have achieved break even, we believe it. No company will continue in business with loss. So presuming on that basic business instinct, we believe that claim that it has achieved break even. And KMC does not charge for the waste, it just transports. And on the right side you can see how this garbage collected has been ultimately produced in form of compost. Here are the gunny bags containing the compost. The fertilizer produced through this composting method is marketed through agencies like Koromandal and Nagarjuna. And this, this uh, agency has got its own brand also called Budan. Budan brand. This is how the collected garbage is ultimately converted into saleable, saleable product, which is manure. This manure is very much in demand. Why? This manure is very much in demand because now there is a fashion and trend of green, organic, organic things. In West Bengal, we have real area called Darjeeling. Darjeeling has history of producing best tea. The Darjeeling tea is called champagne of tea. It's so high quality. Most of it is marketed and imported directly. The tea which we consume and maybe during tea back you would have had is Asahi. It's not Darjeeling tea. Most of 80% of Darjeeling tea is imported directly to European countries and Western countries. They have a special flavor for that. They demand and they also investigate
whether the tea has been produced using organic fertilizer or not. And here is the source from which organic fertilizer comes. What is the problem? The problem is now, in any season. In any season, there is water, water everywhere. So in this uh, landfill site also there is water. So when this water, water soaked garbage cannot be recycled, cannot be used for making man manure. And fertilizer, requirement is seasonal basis. If today somebody produces fertilizer, he can't store it. He doesn't want to store it. He wants to dispose it immediately. And there are seasonal varieties in production. So once the producer actually requires that garbage, that uh, manure, then only garbage is, is started. The production happens and immediately that is sold also. So these are the photos of uh, that plant. There is another factor where we are unable to do composting. But this beautiful green is actually once landfill. About 20 years ago, there used to be unsightly site on left of in bypass. This is a PC chandr is now. Before it was no chandr, no sutra. <laughs> it was only a, only a full of odor, a site which everybody wanted, everybody wanted to avoid. That was the site. Now this garbage uh, collection area has been properly filled up and developed into a beautiful garden. This is where marriages are being held today. And very luckily, this is also trend has caught up with other municipal corporations. In Delhi, there is a landfill site uh, in front of Pagati Manan. And DDA, Delhi Development Authority has developed into a beautiful park at their own cost. Here, we have given it to a party, private party. They, that party also put in some of the money. They have beautified this uh, area. This is called PC Chandra, Chandra Greens. That's how landfill is done. Here I want to stop for one minute. The things are, I told about Calcutta, huge city, 3,500 metric ton of garbage every day, of which we collect 85 to 90%. And what we do, ultimately, some of it is used for making manures, fertilizer, which is ceramic product. Some of it has been already used for filling up of a dumping site and a beautiful garden has been created there. So, this is the result. A survey by the Chim declared in 2006 that Calcutta is the only metro where 90% of total waste generated on a regular basis. And among the metros, different agencies have rated Calcutta as third and second among the metro. Among for this solid waste measure. Therefore, Kerta was chosen. Let's talk about this, uh, this comparison. And I must compliment our friend, Mr. Mandal, here, he is Director General of Solid Waste Management in Kerta Municipal Corporation. Most of the activities were taken under his guidance and supervision. He is man behind all these things. Now I would like to see the things which we can see in picture or by going there only. This extreme opposite, Calcutta is Eastern India metropolis. Jodhpur is the second biggest city in Rajasthan after Jaipur. Jodhpur has a batch of high court also. Ancient place, like all royal palaces in Rajasthan. Very ancient place. In fact, uh, there are palaces which are famous. And most of tourists, especially from Western countries, make it a point to visit Jaipur, Jodhpur, Udaipur, Agra. And others, other, Rajasthan as a whole is a tourist destination, but Jodhpur has a special tourist attraction, which has become a disappear in that areas. Definitely. We had a population of 45 lakhs in Calcutta, plus 80 lakh of floating population, and population of Jodhpur is 11 lakh approximately, which is spread over an area of 232 square kilometers. But this small city, as compared to Calcutta, also the net 380 ton per day municipal solid waste. There is at present no arrangement of segregation of waste at source. There are 65 wards, for out of which only 27 wards are covered for day to day collection facility. Transportation of solid waste is carried out by combination of municipal and privately hired vehicles. This is a bird's eye view of Jodhpur. Jodhpur is also called Blue City. And then here is why it is called Blue City. Most of the buildings are painted blue. Jodhpur is a blue city and Jaipur is pink city. Those who 
also visited Jaipur. We find most of the buildings are done in pink, and here is Jodhpur. Unfortunately, this is unsightly, which no tourist will like to visit this site of Jodhpur. This is a garbage collection. You can see unused, dilapidated bins lying at one corner among the heap of garbages. The appropriate title is this is still to be collected. This has not been collected. This is still to be collected. Why it could not be collected? This is another picture that is besides a luxury vehicle, a good quality high-end car, we are having a bin which is broken, overflowing, not even. How it can be collected? You can see two red figures. Municipal dustbin is lying unused. Cattles are grazing nearby. And this is a common site in village areas of Jaipur. Municipal garbage is lying. Bin is also lying. Cattles are also grazing. Very unsightly thing. Not to be expected in, in a, a tourist imported destination like Jaipur. Here, I just told in 27 what this collection is started. That's how it is being done. In bins, these are mobile bins. Out of collection of mobile bins, transportation done by trucks. But here is the problem. In Calcutta, I showed you compaction and compacted truck. Here, you can see it is open truck and amenable to all kinds of spillage over the roads till it reaches the dumping ground. This is the dumping ground. This is the dumping ground. You can see the smoke coming out of the burning. This is the plant which I wanted to highlight. This plant has also got some specialty. In this plant, Jodhpur is one of the municipal corporations which are using vermiculture, vermicomposting method of composting. Vermicomposting adds quality to manure. In the case also we saw manure, manure is being produced and marketed, but vermiculture, the quality of manure produced is of higher value. It has a better market value. There are 68 huts at that plant of this size. How this vermicomposting is done is, there is a flow chart. All of, most of you are engineers, so I don't go into details of this chart, how the collection is done, how digestion is done how the transfer and movement is done. These, these things are already known to all the engineers. Just to remind them, on the left side is a rotary skin harvested or be composed, composed of worm castings. And on the right side, upper corner, you can see the worms being, being harvested. Below left is how the wave motion is directed so that there is even distribution of uh, manure. And how at home scale this kind of uh, bomb can be demonstrated? This is the product. Apna Star and Godavari Phosphor. Now these two products are products of manure from the plant. How this goes about? After end of the all the products, the problem is that we still have this kind of site in the sky. These are vultures. Why vultures are there? Because vultures can survive only if there is something to eat at the ground. It is said that vultures have got very keen eyesight and if anything worth eating is available on the ground, they collect over, hover around and eat that thing. They are called natural sweepers. In biology, this term called natural sweepers. Vultures are called sweepers of the uh, society. They eat away all the dirty things. But dirty things exist in the first place. What are the dirty things that exist? They are animal, dead animal carcasses. And why these exist? I am explaining this uh, manner. There are common means for decomposable and non-decomposable waste after manual production. With these photos which you saw, there was no system of segregation at the source. The composable as well as decomposable waste they were stored in common way. Storage means for movable as well as fixed. The fixed are durable but cannot be moved. Movable are flexible, easy to transport but not durable. 
it is a problem. The collection so far is 100 empty per day, and this is used for composting at a plant. This plant is situated at Village Kew. I have been to that plant. I have been to this Dapa site also. You know my tenure in KMDA. I have also been to Jodhpur and this very village. I have seen all these things from my eyes, therefore I am speaking. This is situated at village Kevin. Kevin is quite far away, I think about 30 kilometers from uh, city, uh, airport also. And by this plant in 48 acres of area, and this plant has design capacity of 150 empty per day for composting, biocomposting. But this unit composts only 10 to 15 metric tons per day under two brand names, Phosphogold and Godabi, which I showed the bags of which. And they are sold at a empty market, Sikandrabad and Apna started in locally sold at a rate of 1 to 2 rupees per kg. For vermi composting, they, are, they should be using 68 hertz, which I showed in earlier slide, but right now only 10 hertz are being used. Why? Because there is less availability of the raw material. Once you have to have 150 empty of the waste, out of which only organic waste can be composted through vermiculture. And unless you have this much garbage, you can't put all the units into operation. So only one to three empty is being produced per month. And this sold, this high value product, it is sold at two to three rupees per kg. And in nearby, Caracas plant also is operational, which makes Bodhidana. Bodhidana, we know, or the different dead animal carcasses, this Bodhidana, which is fed to uh, hen, which is being produced. The problem is of open dumping. All this dump, dumping is done in open. And therefore, we saw in one of the slides, vultures hovering around. Causes environmental pollution, and there is a very bad of offending smell. Why? Because of the gases produced during this process. The good point is the leachate tank is lined with HGP so that there is no water contribution. But that is not a problem. Why that is not a problem? Why there is not a problem? It is not a problem because Jodhpur has got a dry climate and there is no leaching. Practically no leaching. Leaching takes place only if there is a lot of moisture and a lot of area to absorb those toxic products. If there are no toxic products, nothing to absorb, teaching will not take place. But yet, they have made arrangement for <coughs> prevention of leaching. So, what are our suggestions for Jodhpur? There must be segregation at the source. Unless segregation is done at the source, these kind of problems cannot be avoided. And there must be monitoring of landfill gas. In fact, I have got data of SO2, NO2, etc. at the landfill site at the airport site, at the city, etc. Et so then the forest study has been done. The only in short which can be told is that they needs to be monitored. So what is the most striking point? The striking point is that in first slide I told you that there is 350 empty per day approximate waste generated. And I also told you there is a plant which processes about 100 empty about 80 MT in, in landfill site and about 10 to 15 MT in vermiculture. So what happens to the rest of the waste, 250, what happens? Nothing. It just thrown away. That is the point. So there must be a facility to compost remaining waste or to dispose it through a sanitary landfill site or to do in such a manner that end purpose is received. What, is, what was the end purpose? What was the end purpose through which we began in the beginning, in 2003? Jod, again, coming back to first slide, Jodhpur is an airfield city. Jodhpur is near Pakistan border. We don't want our aircraft to crash because of vultures, because of big birds. And we don't want our city, the premier city with the prime tourist importance, to look such bad. That was the idea. That uh, therefore, central government sanctions sanction projects. So, what is the question? The question is 
what is the question? What to believe? What to believe? Yes. And below is the reply. The reply is genuine. Why genuine? Why genuine? Why genuine? I will show you in a few. The studio is about 20 minutes duration. This will show about the next part of my presentation. This presentation was about two tales of two cities. So we heard about one tale about two cities, Calcutta and Jodhpur. Now there is second tale. Second tale is about two other cities. Those two cities are Nagpur and Thane. Nagpur and Thane in Maharashtra. They were as good or as bad as the other cities. But right now they have been transformed into vibrant cities through January. How? This I will show. Sure, sure, sure. First, I was surprised why you are using Jodhpur because I belong to that space and I work on that in that area. Desert area has got the highest number of animal cattle ratio. So uh, the dead animals, their skin, their skin is utilized and the dead animal is thrown on the outskirts of the city. That is one thing. One, in one culture. <coughs> Sorry to say they are not vultures, they are eagles because vultures no more exist over there. There are hardly 200 vultures left. All the vultures have vanished from that also one of the reasons. That was one of the first forest based management plants of Rajasthan rather than so it was established over there long back. So, uh, and regarding the water table you said, sir, the film also there are uh, problems faced by two towns, Nagpur and Thane, before and after. Just have a look and we will discuss how general transferred these towns. I thought our director general since he has ended this talk. Film independence. Almost every city in India has added more population than it is supposed in terms of housing. Drinking water supply provision, sanitation, electricity, recreational amenities, and good quality air for breathers. This unusual story is being repeated in tier 2 and tier 3 cities. The provision, maintenance, and expansion of civic services and infrastructure have emerged as the key requirement to meet this challenge. Along with this, the issues of good governance, user technology, professional home culture, futuristic planning, and collaborative and participative development at local level have been recognized as essential components for ensuring sustainable growth of cities. They were inspiring instances and success stories of transformation by local municipal corporations that would well become models to be emulated to make our cities really good places to spend a lifetime with joys of life. In the last decade or so, the cities of Nagpur and Thane in the state of Maharashtra which resembled typical clumsy congested cities, metamorphosed into lovely green cities with wide illuminated roads, better traffic management, parks, and lovely shopping areas to the much delight of their residents. Nagpur, the second capital of Maharashtra state, is today home to more than 25 lakh people, spread over an area of over 217 kilometers. The city of Nagpur, a 300-year-old city with a rich history, is a major center of education, culture, and commerce in the Delhi region of the state. It is also listed among the top 10 cities in India. The growth of this, what is popularly called foreign city, started with the establishment of the municipality in 1864. In 1926, Nagpur Improvement Work, or NIP, was set up, which is responsible for developing new areas for the city limits. In 1951, given the expansion of the municipal city, Nagpur Municipality Government into Nagpur Municipal Corporation. 
sharing this child of only younger brother and getting recognition for his own reputation. The problem of the money had essentially to do with a lack of affordable housing in every neighborhood, leading to migration of people and rapid urbanization. The population of Hungary has been increasing consistently since 1951, with an average gender growth rate of 65%. As per 2011 census, the population of the city was 19 half and is projected to touch 59 by 2041. To cope with the existing and multi-level demands of the urban area and develop central needs, the Pani Municipal Corporation has embarked upon an ambitious city development plan under vision of 2031. The mission is to make Pani a global metropolis and a world-class city where its residents can experience both in their standard of living and improve quality of life in a sustainable environment. The foundation of such an action plan, in fact, dates back to 1990s decade when Thane City was facing a host of problems and challenges, enclosures, illegal structures, congested and bad roads, water supply shortages, overloaded sewer networks, leading to overflowing and flooding, increased solid waste generation, and access of the landfill for solid waste. Resulted in choking of drains and obstructing water flow to the reef, threatening water bodies due to daily discharge of sewage and effluent along the solid waste into fortified waste in the city, and the creek were some of the characteristics that defined this once nearly crippled city. High pollution levels of air, noise, and water, along with the deteriorating quality of water, sanitation, public transport, added to bores of urban life. With a significant 35% of population in clouds, the problems appeared daunting. However, the Thane Municipal Corporation decided to take these challenges head on and turn around the set of infrastructure and services in the city. The first major breakthrough came to the integrated road development project started in 1997. It proved a landmark first step. Under this scheme, most of the 283 kilometers of roads in the city were either widened and resurfaced or rebuilt. Of these, 60 kilometers were rebuilt using concrete. DMC planned a way for transfers of unauthorized encroachments and undertook beautification of these roads along with illumination through street lighting. Automated traffic signals for traffic management, dividers, footpaths, landscaping of junctions, were also facilitated by this project. Today, a fleet of nearly 450 buses ferry nearly 2.5 million commuters daily and greatly address the public transport roads of the city. The listing intervention came in the form of restoration of restaurant quality schemes. Thane, due to its peculiar type of revenue, is blessed with 35 lanes and bandits. But over the last 15 years, these had turned into different sites for city's growth, solid as well as liquid. The erosion of idols in festival season became an added source of pollution in these water models. The process of reclaiming these mainly lost leaves, which began in 1995, got a fillet in 2000. When DMC initiated lake conservation program to the assistance of blue industry of environment and forests, Thane, became the first city in India to use bio-remediation technique to clean its two major lakes. This technique is replicated for other lakes as well. And involves use of bacteria to purify water after physical cleaning and aeration. TMC turning these clean lakes into recreational spots by landscaping their embankments, lake jolly crabs and gardens with an study voting and session. At present, out of 35 days, 25 days are in process of utilization and preservation. The rest of the lakes are expected to follow suit in the future. For the sustainable wilderness, these lakes are being leased out for fishing 
with a hand filled with reading and ability to assist the intellectual or article to new projects and expansion of services. This is the first frame we saw certain citizens complaining about certain problems they were facing. In the last frame, we saw certain citizens complimenting the government for the services they are getting. Now, the key thing here, I would say, is again, four or five components which they, which they showed under here, in a new like this. Smaller cities, which we think 
think less because we work in metro areas generally. All of uh, 90 percent of you are from metro areas, Calcutta. But small towns like Shantipur, like Ranagat, like Siliguri, like Raiganj, like Durgapur, like Midnipur. Asansol is mission city by the way. Asansol is second town in Calcutta in West Bengal, which is mission city. Apart from Calcutta and Asansol, all others are non-mission cities. So non-mission cities, we have the component which is called UIDSSMT, Urban Infrastructure Development for Small and Medium Sized Towns. This is a full nomenclature. And the pattern of funding is also very good, 90 to 10. 10% 10 is a government is funding and 90% is coming from government of India. What better kind of funding element can be there, I don't think. This kind of funding element is available only for northeastern states in India under plan schemes. All other schemes, generally pattern assistance has been revised by planning commission to 65-35 or even where states are also bearing a quite a big load of the total plan expenses. Single component for non mission cities under Ministry of Housing and Urban Poverty Elevation is called IHSDP Integrated Housing and Development Program. Other cities are taken up under this. And there is a new component other than these four components called Rajiv Awas Yojana. That entire component is devoted to making housing projects for some people. Because it was felt that whatsoever development you Whatever projects you do, unless you cover the urban poor, unless you cover some population, you are not going to achieve your day. Because they are there, their needs are also taken care of. And one of the reforms, this is since JNNURM is a reform driven program, one of the reforms is here marking the funds for urban poor. So I will just go through very quickly about the reforms program of JNNURM. The reforms are of three varieties. Urban local body level reforms, state level reforms, and option reforms. Urban body level reforms are like e governance, introduction of e governance, e billing, e collection, issue of electronic certificates, shift to equal based accounting from the single uh, entry accounting, property tax collection, operation and maintenance recovery in water supply and sewage uh, and uh, your sewage as also solid waste management earmarking of funds for urban poor so this is also a reform provision of basic services for urban poor and these six reforms they are at urban local body level so any municipality any corporation to become eligible for funding under GNURM has to undergo these reforms other than these reforms are state level reforms, which can be done only from departments, Department of Municipal Affairs, Department of Urban Development, and other departments. These are like implementation of 74th Constitution Amendment, integration of city planning and delivery functions, reform in land control, repeal of Urban Land Sealing Act, storm duty rationalization, enactment of community participation, enactment of public disclosure law, these kind of reforms. And there are optional reforms which give additional points for urban local bodies. Optional reforms are introduction of property title certificates, division of building bylaws, division of uh, rainwater hydro wasting laws, earmarking of 25% development land in all housing projects for economically weaker sections. This is a landmark reform. If anybody can do this. Simplification of legal and policy framework for conversion of agriculture land to non-agriculture purposes. Introduction of computation process for registration of land and property. Bylaws on use of recycled water. Administrative structure reforms and engaging PPP, public-private partnerships. These are optional reforms. So these three kinds of reforms, urban reforms, state level reforms, and urban local body level reforms, enable a local body to receive funds under the environment. As you can see, these both urban local bodies, they underwent these reforms and they are getting funding in the region. In our state also in West Bengal, we are getting many projects from uh, under JNNURM. Uh, if you go to Science City, the flyover which is being constructed over Science City is under JNNURM. Other projects are 
the social side, Salt Lake we have seen a water tank coming up that is under Jindal Nivara. Many projects have taken place, water supply projects, road improvement projects, connectivity improvement projects. Most of the projects are underway, some of the projects have been completed also. Projects uh, encompass all the areas of Asansol, the Municipal Corporation area, as well as smaller cities. This is about Jindal Nivara. Uh, tomorrow also I will touch upon Jindal Nivara some greater details about the water supply and other things. So about today, in case any doubt, in case any clarification is required, I will be happy to answer. Sir, recently Raji Baba's Yojana has been introduced. Yeah. Sir, do you see Raji Baba, what is the default? Sir? Both are under January. Raji Baba's Yojana is the latest component of January. The basic purpose is to provide affordable housing to urban poor. This is the purpose. This has been introduced and taken off in some of the states. Uh, this is also a component of JDN Varem. Funding is available from central government. So what will be the fate of DSUP scheme? DSUP, DSUP will continue. DSUP, DSUP is only for mission towns. You know what is the difference between DSUP and HSDP? DSUP is for mission towns, HSDP is for non-mission towns. It's going to be stopped by... 30, 30, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was for the last one period. The last one period after extension, this uh, scheme will be, yeah, it will be stopped on 31st March 2014. That is right. But simultaneously, it has also been observed that all the requirement has not been fulfilled. Their products are coming up. Stimulus has been given for uh, improvement of urban infrastructure. All urban local bodies are now waking up to need to reform, need to provide infrastructure. So those who are late come what for them. Therefore, Government of India is thinking to extend this JNNR in form of JNNR2. They are thinking that they will launch the next phase of JNNR in which uncovered areas will be taken up. Right. For the rate of their uh, ongoing projects, no? Sure. Ongoing projects will certainly be completed. Not only ongoing projects will be completed, new projects will also be completed. The thing is that we have to be ready. Actually, what happens is, I work under this uh, program. Not yet launched? No, not not yet formally launched. No. This will be launched in next year. But I am telling from my experience how to become ready. I just told you we should be ready. What happens is, when there are 28 states of Indian Union and 7 Union territories, and there are projects to, for sanction, everybody. Everybody has in mind some projects to be undertaken, especially when the funding is so lucrative. 90% from central government, 10% from urban local body, or 65% in case of mission cities. So, this kind of fund, when you require funds to tune off thousands of crores, in West Bengal, so far we have got about 8,000 crore rupees project center. Now, 8,000 crore rupees is not a joke. So, this is, this is, this is back from my own people to remind me that my session is over. So, anyway, so I was telling you about the project readiness of the projects. My experience about this program is that some of the states and some of the officers in urban local bodies, they are smart. How they are smart? They keep track of the projects, keep track of what is coming on, what is going on elsewhere. That means once this general launched in December 2003, on 3rd December 2006, to 3rd December 2006, it was formally launched. The states were found ready, ready with the projects. How ready? They were ready for their own budgetary support, the amount of budgetary allocation they were to make, they had made for in their budget. They were supposed to make draft development plan, they were ready with draft development plan. They were supposed to enter into a moment of agreement with the urban local body, state government and government of India. They were ready with the draft. And they also got this draft approved by their own state governments. Wherever the distributive assembly was to be kept in picture, they got the uh, approval from the distributive assembly in form of an amendment or an amendment to certain act because everything is not in power of even the departments. For promulgating a new law, you need to approve from state legislatures. So these things they were ready. So what happened? First year or second year, about 80% of offtake from the funds were from the states which were ready. 
The states it were ready were six states. Maharashtra, Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, uh, and among northern states, I would say Haryana to some extent only. They were ready and they took away 80% of the funds. Also, the you know those who you know about the accounting process, you know in end of financial year, if the funds are uh, unutilized, either they lapse or they are subordinated to requiring what is. So, funds which were earmarked for the other states were not lapsed, but they were taken away by other states on priority basis. So, states which could not come with the projects, they had to wait for another year. So this is called readiness. So, if you are ready, you can jump on the opportunity, grab the fund, get the project started, and as you saw, some of, most of the projects have already been completed in those cities. We have also taken up many projects. At that point of time, those who, who belong to Calcutta would know that uh, there is a new railway project called Calcutta Metro Rail. At that point of time, I had taken initiative to get that project. Now, Calcutta Metro Rail project is on the way. The, the flyovers, the stations which you are seeing on the busy road connection where you have to wait for quite some time because of the traffic jams or due to construction of those programs, it is because of Metro Rail programs. I know that. I know that. It's going on. It's going on. It's going on. Four major projects were sanctioned. Metro Rail was one. This uh, Vyukan flyover, this Science City flyover, other projects were big projects. We have got our shares. Our share has not lapsed. Only thing is, unless until we are ready to receive, we won't be able to become first. Those who have got early start, they, they reach their goal first. Others also reach the goal, but they reach later. That is only the difference. So we have to become ready. Why I wanted to highlight this information is this. Most of participants here today workshop are engineers. Ultimately, this year that way, it comes down to an engineer to make a plan, to administer a project, to make a project successful. Whatever the administrator can do is at utmost to get a sanction of the project, to be after the government, to be after the ministry, to get the project sanction. But ultimately, this way or that way, it is the engineer who actually executes the project. So, success of a project depends on the engineers. Sir, that is last for question, sure. Sir, last question is small. Yes, please. Many of the urban local bodies are in the lead way to complete the phase two, phase three works of ESU. Sir, what will be their fate if it is not extended beyond 31st March of 2014? So far, there has not been any instance where sanctioned fund has not been allotted by government of India. There has not been any instance so far. On the other hand, there are several instances where the funds have been sanctioned but projects have not been completed. So rest assured, it, once a project is sanctioned, urban local body will get its money. It is job of the state government to provide that fund, get that fund from central government, and they do their job very efficiently. Urban local bodies ultimately get their share, their dues, absolutely their share without any problem. This has never happened in past. Chairman, chairperson, sir, hmm. very much disappointed, sir. Hmm. What will be our fate? Hmm. Have done, come, ho gaya, kya karega? No, no, only thing is, you yes, should sir. tell them is, the sir, please complete the projects in hand. Yes, submit utilization certificate. Yes, submit completion certificates. Once you, yes, to to the... once you digest the food in mouth, only then you should ask for the next. Only, this is like our digestion process. Unless until you digest food in the stomach, you should not eat again. It has to be continued. It has to be continued. A project once undertaken has to be completed, will be completed, and funds are never in shortage. So far, huge projects have been taken up. Has anybody complained about the fund shortage? No. There is shortage in the problem. There's problems and shortages of manpower, shortages of technical te techniques and technical manpower, but never of the fund. It is. It takes only one minute to sanction a project and issue a government order sanctioning 1,000 crores of rupees. But to actually and fruitfully utilize that 1,000 crores of rupees in the projects, it takes not less than two to three years. If you really want to do the good work, it's not that we somehow get over the projects. We really want to, you know, engineering projects are not a, you must have heard about a critical path method and part techniques. You people are doing it. It's not that overnight a project can happen. It can never happen. Even the best planned projects at times fail. 
even the best planned project. So you have to plan, you have to plan carefully, and the project is to live its life 30 years, 50 years, 100 years. Many projects overlive, overlive. They overlive their expected life. It's not that. Many projects which are originally designed only for 30 years continue for 100 years. It's not that. So projects are carefully planned, carefully executed. They, they live their complete life. And for that, we have to take care that these projects are very carefully implemented and projected. Nobody will ask any question to, about funding. Everybody will say that why this bridge collapsed because of fault of engineer. Nobody will say it because of depth of funding or because of delay in funding. Nobody will ask these questions. Even the best, uh, you would have heard seen in Calcutta, one part of a flyover collapsed. One part. Luckily nobody was injured. This uh, right hand, right turning flyover nearby. There was a technical fault and everybody blamed whom? The consent engineer did not supervise that uh, bearing, the bearing joint was not properly made up, it was fixed in reverse direction. That was from the ultimately. So thing is that we have not only to get the project sanctioned, we have to very carefully execute it also, so that projects are really beneficial to the people. Yes. That is the essence of thing. So we, we, we shall continue this discussion tomorrow also. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thanks to our sir for his stories of development.